Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and before we get into today's video well I'm just going to remind you the three books that are on sale drink tea and read the paper if you're a green belt and a black belt and you want simple instruction on how to apply your skill design of experiments for 21st century engineers and finally a statistical process control for small batch production. They are all available from lulu.com and the links are in the video below. Okay, uh, welcome to Complexity Made Simple and the latest case study, part rationalization. Now this is a great case study to show you where lean, oops, where lean and Six Sigma meet. Why they're both trying to do similar things. And essentially it is the removal of variability. In the word of lean, they talk about unevenness. They have a word for it. Japanese word. Mura. Unevenness. Goes along with muda and muri, uh, which they also talk about in lean. But this just shows you that this, this simple project for me, it, it's all about 5S. But by the way, there, there are no cleaning routines here. This is work, proper workplace organization, workplace organization that makes money. Okay, so you're gonna see 5S being used to get a process under control, which is its proper use, not to be cleaning up with it every week. So let's take a look at this thing. Okay, the current situation, now this is an ink, this is an ink manufacturing company. And uh, currently it says they have 380 pots on site and they use these things to mix the ink in and they're all various sizes uh, i think the ink gets mixed in a pressurized situation so they have to be inspected they also have to be maintained they've got wheels on the bottom um they've got wheels on the bottom and that's part of the way that the uh, the process works so there's certain things that have to work properly in order for them the mixing to take place correctly but currently they have 380 pots that all spread all over the factory um, as they're saying here look pots are stored everywhere they don't know where they are uh, when they come to clean them or maintain them they have to go and find them so there's lots of searching time and all sorts of things going on so lots of lost uh, capacity and um, it's quite a difficult thing to, to manage and maintain so here's a picture um, here's a picture of the the pot you can see let me see that kind of uh, this thing's kind of a little bit inky and dirty but uh, that's just an example of uh, one of the pots right there and, th and they are all uh, different sizes um, you can see that they're machine washed as it's saying here and washed out with a solvent uh, and there's also these these kind of things the valves and all the fittings are are maintained as well so um, it's a it's a fairly involved little little process and you don't want to be wasting time uh, doing it so here's the team the, the guy that's going to do the work actually the, the guy whose project this is is Lee there so uh, Lee Lee Hook um, yeah they all do look like they've been arrested for something don't they on that uh, photo <laughs> but uh, that's the team that's the team that took part in this project anyway and okay, we, we're going to do something just very basic. We, we are going to identify variability. So what Lee is doing here, he, he's using a cause and effect diagram and he's looking at the variables in the process. Now this is a very, very powerful way to look at a process. In fact, he's looking at the input variables. And what we're simply going to do, we are going to remove the variability. We are going to remove 
unevenness, as you might say, in Lee. And, and that's all he's going to do. Um, and, and the process, I mean, we, we haven't got the results here because this is, this is a process that clearly is, is going to go on for the next three, five years. And they will see how much time they save, how much better they do maintenance. Um, and part of it as well was removing unnecessary pots from the system. So they've really created a system that should work better, that will allow them to manage the pots better. They won't really see the, the payoff for a year or two yet. So there's all the variables in the in the process. Let's let's take a look at what was concerning him. So the first thing he, he identified is the fact that they had, I think he said to me, three different ways of identifying the pot. Um, so you can see there's, there's barcodes, there's tags. Um, some of them don't have any information at all. Um, but, but there are the variables, different ways of identifying the, um, different way of identifying the, the pots. What else has he got? So uh, here's, his, here's his identification sheets. And there's also a maintenance, so there's an asset number. Let's put, let's put a third thing in there. He hasn't put that on the cause and effect diagram. But you can identify the pot as a tag you can identify it as a barcode. You can identify it as an asset number. Could we think of any more ways to identify the same piece of equipment? And all three get used. Um, consequently, as he mentions here, look, when you get variability, what do you get? In the words of Six Sigma, we get chaos. We want to go from chaos to control. And then over the next year or so lee will be able to take this process to excellence okay so first thing he's got to do sort out the identification system and now he's created a new label so as you can see look no tags no barcodes one pot one number yeah it's it's kind of simple stuff it's 5s isn't it it, it really is just 5s but it's a great 5s is a great technique for getting a process under control that's why we love it in Six Sigma. And then he also creates at the same time a location for it and he's got some information that goes with it, so the pot size. Um, so he's, he's just creating great workplace organization. That's all this is about. So we're just going through some examples of what he's doing. Um, so process flow. Now this, this is the process by which he's correcting everything because obviously he's got 380 pots. There's, there's 380 pots spread all over the factory at the moment. They all have to be correctly identified and changed. So he's just telling us what the process is going to be and really what he's going to do is he's going to do this as each part is picked to be maintained. He will um, re-identify it, give it a location and generally just tidy the process up almost a pot, almost a pot at a time. So going back to his cause and effect diagram, then what's the next thing he's looking at? Now the next thing that was variables, look, was this thing right here. They had several different ways, several different maintenance periods. So some pots were done every six months, some 12, some 24. Nobody knew why. Nobody knew why those three periods existed. They were just there. Not simple, let's change it. It's not difficult rather, let's change it. So here we go, it's just identifying that look. So obviously each, each pot's got its own check date. It's got these different flipping routines here. Um, pots are taking around 15 minutes, 15 minutes to check. But here's the thing, look. We're going to go search for it um, by up to 30 minutes. Um, and this is a health and safety requirement. Yeah, this isn't just about the performance of the, of the equipment, although it is about the performance of the equipment. It's also a health and safety issue. So, you know, if one of these pots gets, gets missed and a problem occurs, this is, a, you know, this is um, potentially quite a dangerous situation. You never want to be compromising on something that's related to safety. So they're going to get this process 
Uh, let's get this thing under control. Let's get it. Let's get it all correct. Now then, one of the issues with that six month, the six month, the twelve month, the twenty four month period, is that the the pot maintenance workload was all over the show. And here's three separate weeks where they did pot maintenance. And you can see, look, some days they don't know anything because they're not due. Some days they do one. Then all of a sudden, flip my neck. And it's a Friday. It's called for 10 to be maintained on that day. Now you imagine trying to manage your maintenance resources with all this variability going on. You can't find the pots. The pots come at you different quantities on different days. You never know whether it's going to take you 30 minutes to find the pot or not. Uh, you can see, look, here's all, the, here's all the pot searching that went on, look. Yeah, so double. Essentially, we're doubling the time here to go look for the pots. And as I say, you've got all this workload that you're trying to manage and understand whether you've got free maintenance people and all sorts. It's just not great. One of the great things about Lean, and it makes you do this about demand patterns, it makes you flatten demand patterns. Because if you flatten demand patterns, take the variability out of it, as Six Sigma would say, you create a simple system that's easy to manage. Here we go, oh, look, oh look at that. Let's, let's flatten the demand pattern. So now look, we're straight away. We know we're gonna spend an hour and 15 minutes. It seems that at the moment, it's taking 50 minutes to find the pots. Much better than what it was taking before. Still not brilliant, but um, we've got pot location information. Uh, and as it says there, we're, we're saving 10 minutes a pot. Um, so, you know, this is the, this is the current proposal um, and if we've got 380 pots we've got to do two pots a day and, and that's the way that we're going to do this and, and then you can manage the resources so much easily okay now then next thing we're looking at how many times does a pot get washed so we're talking now about things like usage essentially of the pot in other words do we actually need 380 of them? Because we've never identified them properly and we don't know where to find them and all sorts of things, um, we never really understood whether the 380 are really in, in process are needed or not. So we've probably got pots that we don't need. We're probably doing maintenance on pots that probably haven't been used, all sorts of things. Um, so lots of wasted time as well. So now we're going to create, number one, we're going to create a location. We're going to create a proper number for it. We've got some information that tells you the pot size so when you go find it, you'll know you've found the right pot just in case there's a problem perhaps with the identification. We can also create a 12 monthly checklist um, that tells you two pots a day and you can just work your way through the list from one to 380 very straightforward there's also a tally chart so what this is going to do look it's a little five it's gonna be a little five bar gate how many times does the pot get washed in other words how many times we're we using this thing they're gonna collect two months of data before we make any decisions about rationalizing pots so you know part of what they're doing here is setting up a system that enables them to rationalize pots and take pots out of the system that they don't want. They can sell the, the pot for scrap, potentially. Uh, they can spot if a particular size of pot is being overused and maybe introduce um, more stock, more resource where it's needed. So they'll, they'll be able to understand what's going on. And here's the system in progress, look. So you can see, happy, happy maintenance man here. And uh, there's the simple visual management that's going on behind him you can see they've done a fair bit of work here pots have got 
uh, pots have got washed and maintained um, so a little bit of a um, little bit of a close-up the one thing that I would say that would be better is the due date here so a better thing would be a column with due date and then next to it the date checked and and I, I, probably what I would do actually is rather than maybe go 1 to 380 I would probably put it in due date order and then the person can look and say okay these two pots are due today where are they and go go find them do the work um, so I probably would put the due date on there because then what you've got is when you look at this thing you got nice nice visual management so when somebody looks down the list they can find today's date and if if we haven't maintained what's what's due today we have an issue we can decide we've got a problem and put it right so um, nice bit of visual management there if we put the due date I would personally put the due date on there and put it in due date order to make it easy to do but um, hey the, the, the starting this off this is a great it's a great improvement on what they were doing and there's a little tally chart look as well telling them the usage so you can see that some of the 70s not sure what size the 70s are but uh, they're getting a they're getting an awful lot of work by the look of it because they're getting washed um, on a pretty regular on a pretty regular basis so three months worth of data they started looking then how many times that um, pots were being washed um, I've got the information since then look two pots have been scrapped 264 265 have gone I've decided that they weren't being used at all didn't need to be in the system uh, there'll be others probably that will that will go but now they're in control of the process now of course what we're doing I would call this this is this is your red tagging process isn't it so if we go if we go 5s they are red tagging the items now I think they actually use blue tags there they are so here's the blue tag um, I would call it a red tag process but it doesn't really matter what color it is as long as everybody knows what we're doing um, so um, and, and these these pots look this is part of the process these have been uh, four pots have been tagged uh, for a one month period just to check how often they get used and uh, if, if they don't get used these guys are going so just simple this, this was a, a simple thing it just got the variables under control I got the team leader I got Lee to think about just the little pieces of what goes on the labeling the routines the, the periods the way that you display the information so that everybody can see what's going on etc it's just a simple set of variables and and all we did was we just used 5s I don't like the word 5s I prefer to use the phrase workplace organization because you could see from this project that was exactly what Lee did he just organized the workplace that's what 5s is you'll notice there's no brushes involved there's no cleaning up going on here this is 5s folks uh, 5s at its best it's being used to get a process under control and make money well I hope you found that uh, useful uh, if you've got any questions about that topic or indeed anything to do with Six Sigma or Lean for that matter, give me a call and I hope to hear from you soon.